I just want to welcome everyone today. Um, I, my name is Nayeli Gonzalez. I am a UCS, UC San Diego alum. I graduated from Eleanor Roosevelt College um, in political science with the studies in American politics. And from there, I loved UC San Diego so much that I decided to come back and talk to you all today about our college system. And so just today, what we'll be kind of be covering, covering over is what is our agenda? Um, what is the college system? Can you see my screen just to double check? Do you, do you see the agenda? No, you do not see the agenda. Oh no, okay. Sorry, I've been having issues with my computer. Okay, let's try this one more time. Oh, give me one second. Stop sharing. Okay. This works. I'm hoping that you can see my screen now. Do you, I really hope you see my screen. Okay. Let's do screen. Okay, awesome. So what? You see the agenda? Okay, perfect. All right. So just going over um, the college system. So what is the college system? Um, we'll talk about that. I'll give you additional resources, kind of giving you the overview to each college. I will say for UC San Diego, this is very unique and it's very special programming that we have for our university. So we want to make sure that you are well equipped to know how to rank each one of the colleges on the application, as well as just get a feel to our university and the amount of impact that we make and the intentionality of our programming. Along with that, we're going to kind of go into our college ventures. And then, like I mentioned, ranking the colleges on the UC application. And if you have any questions, please feel free to include them in the chat. I'm more than happy to answer all of these questions. Now, a little bit about the college system. So this is really unique to our university. Um, we're the only UC that does this college system and think of the college system as a neighborhood. So our UC San Diego is situated on 1200 acres of land, which is a lot of land. For those who've ever been to the happiest place on earth, which is Disneyland, it is about seven Disneylands, including California adventures. So you can tell it is a lot of land. For those who've ever been to a Walmart, it's about 480 Walmarts. So lots of Walmarts and lots of Disneylands. How do we make you feel like you're not just a number? I was coming for myself and my experience, I was coming from a really small town where I knew everyone and I was really scared to just start college with over 33,000 undergraduate students. And so how do I feel like I am part of a community that accepts me, that is able to take care of me and know each other on a one-to-one -one basis? The eight college system is there for you. So we, for those who do not know, UC San Diego is considered a top tier research institution. So we are known for our research, we are heavy, um, on our research, but we also, you know, because of all this prestigiousness that we have here at our university, we want to still create that approachable, small community feel like I keep mentioning. So that's what we have here at our eighth college system. So each one of the colleges provides access to personal advising, for uh, supportive services, and opportunities to get involved. I always like to say that you have eight times more activities at uh, UC San Diego because of the eight colleges. Now, when you're ranking them, it does not matter what major you are part of or what major you're interested in. Every major is represented in every college. So it doesn't matter what it is, you can be part of any single one of them. So as someone who went to Eleanor Roosevelt College um, in political science, I had friends who were engineers, I had friends who were scientists, friends who are business majors. So um, it is just really to create that small, unique feel. Something that's unique for first year students, so those that are that are coming in straight from high school, is that you have your specific general education requirements. So we like to say that each one of our colleges is unique and we love them all equally, although we do have a lot of spirit competitions and we like to say which one's always the best, which is usually the one that your, your college is in. But it is something that's really fun. It keeps the energy going. 
But the only thing that's the difference is your general education requirements and your neighborhood and your location on campus. So we're all located, almost like those seven Disneylands, all located in one area. And we have those splits. So if you are a first year coming in, you'll be living with people in your college, taking the same general education as everyone else in your college. So I remember as a student coming in, remember a small town, didn't know anyone. I remember entering my first general education class, 450 person lecture and being like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I don't know where I'm going to be. I don't know where I'm going. And then I like look to the side and I see someone who is who was living right next door to me. I saw someone from right down the hall and then someone in my building. And I was like, wow, my entire friend group is here. So it's something that's really nice and really fun um, and a great way to just get involved. Now going into a little bit more about the resources. So if you have any questions at the end of this and you're like, you know what, I don't know how to, I don't, I don't know anything else about the colleges. You know, Nayeli talked about this, but still not clicking. We have our website admissions.ucsd.edu slash colleges, mycompass.ucsd.edu slash public, and compare.ucsd.edu. We also have our Spanish versions for this, so you can look at our Spanish resources. Um, they are available to you. And so for compare.ucsd.edu, the last, the last bullet point that you see there, this is for those that are interested in learning about your four-year plan. How are you, what classes do you have to take for your specific college, for your specific major? So each one, you'll be able to click on your major, click on a college, random college, and then see all the different courses that are listed there. If you need more information about the colleges, we do have our Triton brochure, and that's on our webpage, admissions.ucsd.edu slash publications. Now, as you see, it's a picture of Eleanor Roosevelt College, my favorite college, but you can kind of see the breakdown as to each one of the colleges. So like I said, there are eight colleges. We will start with Ravel College, which is our first college, John Muir College, Thurgood Marshall College, Earl Warren College, Eleanor Roosevelt College. We have sixth college, seventh college, and eighth college. As, as you can tell, the last three have not been named yet, and that's because we have a specific tradition that happens that we need to wait and find someone who will resemble our specific philosophy. So I'm going to start going into them uh, one by one. And again, if you have any questions, please put them on the chat. I'm more than happy to answer them. So going into the first college, um, Ravel College is named after Roger Ravel, who was one of the founding members of UC San Diego. And so he wanted to create a university where leaders of sciences, social sciences, arts and humanities would come together to create, um, to create research and groundbreaking research. And so the philosophy with the specific college is where the sciences, arts and humanities join to educate and inspire multidisciplinary scholars. So what this means is that a lot of the courses are going to be looking at your humanities, looking at mathematics, natural sciences, social sciences, fine arts, and foreign language. And that's something that I want to mention. Each one of the colleges is unique. And so the GEs are going to look a lot different. So as you start looking and ranking, you want to look, oh my gosh, do I want to take a natural science? Do I want to take a heavy math course? Um, those are things that you want to look at. For Ravel College, this specific college, all the classes that you're going to be taking are really just to obtain the skills and knowledge to effectively and creatively pursue additional study. For those that are in research, this is a great opportunity to, you know, go beyond the limit. Um, you are adapting to a rapidly changing environment. And so I like to think of this college as the Renaissance College or like the Renaissance Scholar, because you're taking a little bit of everything to then become a, um, become an educator. I will be mentioning um, some of the fun activities and traditions that happen through each one of the colleges, but as you can see, you can look down and you'll find all of the Instagram handles on there. So you can always check out our, our posts on there. And so I'll mention each one of each of the colleges, maybe two um, if we do have time. But one of the fun traditions in Ravel College that I absolutely love is the watermelon drop. Now, the watermelon drop, it's a legend, this conspiracy theory that once upon a time, there was a 
professor who gave a class on, it was like a physics chemistry class, and the professor made them take a test, and the students took this test, and it was asking, if I take a watermelon up to Yuri Hall, which is one of our lecture halls on campus, what would be the velocity in which it fell and the splatter radius? And so, you know, students are taking this test. They're like, oh my goodness, let's see if we get it right. And they go to ask the professor and they ask the professor, can we throw this watermelon? Is it possible? And so the professor says, yeah, let's go do it. So they go to Yuri Hall and they go up the stairs because there was no elevator, up the stairs, drop the watermelon. It was like the gunshot heard around the world. Everyone knew about this at the end of it. They said, oh my goodness, the watermelon drop. And so uh, since then, it's been a tradition where we will crown our watermelon royalty. Our watermelon royalty will then walk up the stairs to the watermelon, drop the watermelon off, It'll splatter, and then we celebrate with watermelon lollipops, watermelon candy, watermelon everything. And so those are fun activities that happen with Ravel College. Wow, oh, right. Going on to the next one, we have Muir College. So Muir College is named after John Muir, who was a conservatist as well as an environmentalist. And so um, for those that know a little bit about the national parks, you know that Muir Woods is, is a, one of those big ones that are in Northern California. And so John Muir loved the woods, loved learning about the environment and was considered an independent spirit. So the philosophy with Muir College is the independent spirit. So you can kind of see the, the difference, the contrast between Ravel College, which is learning about a little, a little everything, to Muir College, which is just focused on one person, one thing. And so we really work on Muir College to prepare to lead a variety of successful, committed, and self-directed life. So the classes that you'll be taking are a little bit centered towards liberal arts courses. So you're looking at writing, social sciences, a math or science course, and then two of the following three areas, final, fine arts that you get to choose, fine arts, um, humanities and a foreign language. So you can choose two of the three. A fun activity that happens, I don't know what it is about people in UC San Diego throwing fruits and veggies around, but we have this tradition called the pumpkin drop. And ironically, it happens close to Halloween where we will grab this huge pumpkin. That's not like a regular watermelon, it's a huge pumpkin. And they will carve the inside of the pumpkin, add candy to it, and then they will take it. We don't crown, we don't crown pumpkin royalty. Unfortunately, I had already asked a while back. I wanted to be royalty, and it didn't happen. But they will take this pumpkin, all hands on deck, take it to the highest, ele the highest elevator, the highest building of Muir College, and drop it. I've never once seen 18, 19, 22 year olds run for candy. It was like, it was, it was a fruit piñata. It was the most fun activity I've ever seen happen where everyone's like running for their lives to get this candy. So that's a fun activity that happens in Muir College. Now, um, also I do want to highlight one of the other activities that happens in Muir College and that's Muir Stock. Muir Stock is a really fun event and you'll kind of see each one of the colleges will have a, a music festival. Like I said, if I got to participate in the pumpkin drop, I got to see the watermelon drop, I get to be involved in all the different activities, but this isn't my, this wasn't my college, that's okay. I remember eight times more activities, so you get to be part of everything. For Muir Stock, this is a fun festival, music festival. If you're interested in photography, you like to do event planning, you want to, you know, get connected to people, this is a really good way to get involved because it is student run. So all of my friends got to put in mirror stock. I got to drive the artists and the rappers um, for mirror stock one of the years. So it's a really fun way to get involved. And if you're interested in getting to see some of the more, act more activities that happens in Muir College, you'll see it in Muir College official. All right, um, moving on to the next one. We have Marshall College and Marshall College is named after Thurgood Marshall, who was, um, the 
prominent lawyer in the Brown v. Board of Education case, which desegregated nation schools, and then later was the United States Supreme Court Justice. And so with Marshall College, thinking about law, thinking about um, civil rights, the college itself, is, the philosophy is the scholar and citizen. So your general education, while it is in math, natural sciences, fine arts, humanities, and areas outside your major, this is really looking at the deep analysis of the challenges that people have faced in the United States, looking at the contradictions as to how it shaped the institutions, um, social justice movements, and being able to create and give students the necessary skills to challenge injustices as they arrive in the United States and in the world. So some of the traditions that are really fun in this, um, this specific college are is Marshall Palooza. And for those that don't know, I did mention I was part of a small town. I, I like to consider it a cow town where I, I would have fairs every year. And so I started to miss it towards the spring quarter. I started missing, you know, seeing all my friends go to their fairs back home. That Marshall Palooza was right in the middle. Um, I got both music and I got my little fair. So they had a Ferris wheel, a photo booth. They had... Um, what a petting zoo so you could pet animals it was a really fun event that you can get involved in so that's something that's really really cool they also have a lot of cultural celebrations that happen in marshall college um doesn't matter what you know what identities you identify with you could be part of these cultural celebrations to gain awareness which is really cool the next college is earl warren college and so earl warren was named after the three-time california governor and the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, Earl Warren. And um, the speaking of Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, he did preside over the Brown v. Board of Education case, which I mentioned in the last slide. And so because he was so involved in a lot of different things, people always wondered, you know, how does this person live a life in balance? And so Earl Warren College, the philosophy there is towards a life in balance. So it is understanding the important contributions an individual can make in a society. So the general education will resemble two mini minors. So you get to choose outside of your major, two smaller area studies that you want to do, um, which is kind of cool because then you get to decide what you want to choose and, and then from there um, create your general education. A fun tradition that happens in Earl Warren College is Warren's Got Talent. Again, anyone can participate. Got talent, you get to be part of Warren's Got Talent. So you get to show off your talents. There's also Warren Live Concert, um, where Jesse McCartney, I'm not too sure if you all know who that is. At the time when I was younger, I he was awesome. Um, our Warren Live, super fun event. They always have cool and awesome people come in and perform for them. And then Winter at Warren Land is a fun activity where they will bring, um, I think they're they're like machines of like fake snow. And so people will go slide, like sledding and we'll have, um, we'll also have like snow, ice, like you can do like ice snows or like snow angels. It's really fun, a really cool activity to do. All right, and so the next one is Earl, Earl Warren College. No, it's Eleanor Roosevelt College. And this is my favorite college because I went to this college. Uh, for those who don't know who Eleanor Roosevelt was, she is the former first lady of the United States, but was actually the first United States delegate to the United Nations. And so the philosophy here is developing world citizens through scholarship, leadership, and service. I always like to say the international scholar. So whatever your field of study is, you get to explore your interest and responsibilities as a global citizen. So the core courses that you'll be taking for this specific college are really focused on international understanding and cultural diversity. So you'll be taking a language class, you'll be taking um, some sort of anthropology, sociology course, 
uh, which is a which is really awesome. So I definitely felt that international scholar by the end of my time at Eleanor Roosevelt College. A uh, fun tradition that happens is Sunday suppers at International House. So the International House is just that it's called I House International House. It's 50% American students and 50% international students. And so this is a great opportunity for those that want to get involved. Every sun, not every Sunday, once Sunday, one Sunday a month, they will host a a specific country, they'll host a specific um, culture, and students will put this on, and you get to eat uh, that specific food from the culture. They'll have music, they'll have students get involved, so you kind of get to learn a little bit more about um, different cultures, gain awareness, gain awareness of certain issues that are happening in those cultures or those na um, nations, and so that's a good way to get involved in that. Okay, and as I said, we're going to start continuing on after Eleanor Roosevelt College, we start getting into the 6th, 7th, and 8th college. They haven't been named yet just because, like I said, we really focus in on who, who is the person that embodies this specific personality or this specific philosophy for this college. So 6th college was opened in 2001, and so the idea there is innovative interconnected and aware. So it's cultivating curious minds to tackle the complex challenges of our time. So this is moving towards, you know, we're going from 2001, now hitting 2022. We're looking at students who are in sixth college graduating with the ability to engage each other, the world, to find ways to tackle complex challenges, to find the necessary tools to build a more sustainable and equitable future for all. So the, the big course that happens here is um, CAT, which is really a critical inquiry into how art and technology shape and propel cultures. So like I said, it really just engages that like innovative, which is the, the art and technology interconnected, which would be your cultures and being aware of all how that all comes together. A fun tradition that happens here, and as you know, we're hitting dinner time, so I'm starting to get a little hungry, but the chocolate festival is the most amazing activity that happens here. I got involved my first time. I couldn't, I didn't know that people would dunk mac and cheese into chocolate fountains. It's a thing. I don't know why, but um, the chocolate festival is a fun activity that you, you go in, they have chocolate everything. You can go multiple times to the chocolate fountain. You can dunk Rice Krispies. You can dunk strawberries, hamburgers if you want to. Um, it's a really fun activity that you get to be involved in um, while you're in sixth college or while you're in any other college. Um, and again, if you are interested in getting to see more of the activities, more of the students, you can always go onto our Instagram page and see that. Now going into our seventh college, our seventh college is, I'm just gonna double check on time, but our seventh college is one of our newer colleges and the philosophy there is confronting the confronting the challenges of a changing planet so now we're really focusing in on what's what's occurring in our in our current society in our planet and how is that affecting us so when it comes to our students we're really looking at empowering students with the knowledge and the necessary skills to confront the challenges posed by our changing planet and so you'll be seeing the, a lot of the courses look at enhancing their academic experience through research, internships, and studying abroad. And this is really, um, again, the challenges of a changing planet. We're looking at it from every field. So it doesn't matter whether you're STEM, because I know we think a lot when it comes to changing planet as a STEM thing. No, it, this is into politics, into education. How can we create solutions in every field um, towards this challenge of a changing planet? And that's something that I do want to highlight. A fun activity here um, is the sunset soiree that happens. Everyone gets together and um, just like it's a festival of just being excited for the school year. We also have Earth Week and every like it's an entire week, obviously festival, um, but they have different activities and programming that occurs during that time. Eighth College is our engagement and community. And so um, as you can see, it's kind of it looks kind of bland right now, but that's because if you are enrolling as a fall 2023 student, you may be 
the first class, which is really exciting. So the philosophy with Eighth College, for those that are interested, it's engagement in community. So it's looking at inter interdisciplinary approaches to solving issues within our community. So, you know, we looked at international, we looked across across different fields. This is really focusing in on community. So we're looking at addressing some of the world's most challenging issues that are structural racism, economic disparities, health and well-being, because, you know, we see that happening a lot more um, and more current here in, in this time, being more aware of our health and well-being. We're looking at climate disruption and a lot more things that are happening. So um, if you are interested, you know, you can be part of this. And as you can see, there are no traditions. So if you're someone who's like, I want to leave a legacy, I want to be the first person to create a tradition for eighth college this is your time to shine and you get to be part of that experience. All right, going on to the next thing, um, the joint ventures, and we're almost done. The joint ventures, these are for people who are identified with a certain community, um, certain identity. If we do have the African Black Diaspora LLC, which is our living learning community. These are communities that you get to be a part of. You do have to apply. It's, the application is not very difficult, but you get to apply and then you'll be living with community within that community. So that community could be completely different from your college. And that's something that I do want to know. Um, each one is located in different areas. But if you are really interested in, you know, growing and you're like, I want to be closer to my like to the people that I identify with then from there, you can definitely be part of the living learning communities. So we do have the African Black Diaspora, as I mentioned. We have the LGBTQIA plus living learning community and the RASA resource, um, RASA resource, the RASA living learning community. And those are for our Latinx, Chicanx students. Um, we also have our Triton Research and Ex Experimental Learning Scholarship Program that you get to, that you can get part and be in part you could get to be involved in if you're interested. We do have our first year and transfer year experience courses, and you can take that one course and get to, it helps you transition, um, which is a really nice opportunity. And as I mentioned before, we are so competitive. We're, we always, when it comes to our colleges, get so excited and pepped up to just show our spirit and show which college is the best college. So the Unolympics is a great opportunity where you can be part of a dance competition, you can be part of an obstacle course, or just root on and you know show posters for your specific college. Um, the last thing that I do want to mention is the uh, Craft Center Open House. And the Craft Center Open House, actually, um, it's located in Sixth College. And you get, as a student, you have access to the Craft Center. I had access to the craft center um, even as a as an admissions officer, and I got to create an art piece with all of my friends, which was really fun. Okay, so now going into the nitty gritties. Now, when you're applying to UC San Diego, you're going to click that box that says UC San Diego. It's going to open up a college system ranking. You get to rank it based on preference. I always say as a student, as a family member, as an admissions officer, look at your general education requirements. As you can see, each one is different, each one is unique. So look over those four year plans, see, you know, if you're not someone who wants to take an entire chemistry sequence, maybe a specific college might not be the one that you want to rank to the top. Um, you want to look at the college theme, the college culture, but I will say that ranking does not affect your chances of admissions or majors. We will admit you first as you, as an individual, with no say in terms of major. We will then place you into your major and we'll place you into your college. And so that's something to consider for our admissions. And like I said, our college system is unique. So you need to take that into consideration. And of course, if you have any other questions when it comes to the UC San Diego college system, you can learn more about it at the website provided down below. Now, I know we have a couple of minutes. Do anyone have any, does anyone have any questions? I do have a few questions that are in the chat that I'll relate to you. Perfect. My first question is, what is the distinction between the eight colleges? Are there more majors? Uh, what's the distinction between eight colleges? It's just the it's just that neighborhood feel. It's the philosophy, the general education. Um, they don't have 
every major is represented throughout every single one of the colleges. So that's completely separated from your academic schools. So it doesn't matter what major you're in, you can go into any single one of them. We'll, you'll still get access to all of the different majors on our campus. The second question is, for admission purposes, do they consider weighted GPA? Yes, for admission purposes, we do consider weighted GPA and we look at your 10th and 11th grade year. And then would it be more helpful to take more honor and AP courses? Um, if someone likes to take challenging courses, but doesn't always um, have the have an A, would it be better to take a C, uh, college prep course and get an A? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we look at you or we look at the applicant through the local school context. So we'll be comparing your student to your peers. And so that's something to take into consideration. We do wanna make sure that our students, we look at a 13 point scale and you can look that up on our website. We do have all the bullet points with everything that we look at. Um, for us, we look at you and this is unique to UC San Diego. It's a holistic approach. So we wanna know that your student is rigorous and is taking rigorous coursework. So um, while it is helpful and obviously any AP honor courses is always considered a plus for us, um, it's not a necessary thing, but it is for it is considered one of those rigorous courses. We want to see you in the context of your school. Um, and then, yeah, I think I think that answers your question. Yep. And then um, another question. Can you uh, explain a little bit about the different colleges? Do they apply separately or is it just the ranking system? Yeah, you don't have to. Um, you don't have to apply, you'll just be ranking them. And so we usually ch choose your top three choices. Um, and lately we've, not lately, but this past year we did really well and we were placing you within the top two, which is good. So make sure that you're looking because um, it's up to you. You get to decide, it has a lot to do with how you rank them. If you want a major in engineering or all those majors in Warren. No, Tyler, not all those majors are in Warren. I know that's a misconception. You can be part of any single one of the majors. Um, it doesn't necessarily, some students do that are in, in engineering are in Warren College. It'll really just be based on what your philosophy is and how you want to take classes. I had friends who are engineers and biochemists um, at Eleanor Roosevelt College, and they did exceptionally well, like received awards and like 4.0 GPA throughout um, college and they were in a very heavy social sciences. So it really goes, it depends on what kind of classes you want to take. So um, that's something to consider. Yeah, follow up to that. How do you rank the colleges for the engineering majors? Yeah, look, I would say go to the, the uh, specific website for the four-year plans and look at the classes that you'll have to take. Of course, there are some courses, especially when it comes to your GEs, it being like the chemistry sequence, physics sequence, um, this might be something to take into consideration because, you know, you could cancel or eliminate um, certain courses for both your GEs and your major courses. So that's something to take into consideration. So I say, look at the website, look through all of the different, and there's a PDF too, all the way on the bottom of our page that will give you the entire breakdown. But I would say, look at those four-year plans as well. Um, do you look at the ninth and 12th grade grades for GPA? For admissions? Yeah, so while we take into consideration your 10th and 11th grade, we are like we wait, we look at your GPA for 10th and 11th grade, we do take into consideration your 9th and 12th grade year. So we want to make sure that you're still being rigorous, that you, if you had any dips or declines, let's say 9th grade, you didn't do really well, um, you can always include it in the additional comment section. That's something that um, I always recommend um, is, and just kind of talk about your the situation that happened. You know, that can have been a really difficult time and transition, so you want to include that. But yes, we do look at how rigorous you were um, your 12th grade as well. Or is it possible to transfer among the eight colleges throughout your time at UCSD? Yeah, great question. Um, so for the most part, it, it, you can transfer throughout or among those eight colleges. However, on your first year or as a transfer student, they'll recommend that you uh, stay in your specific college for an entire year before applying to transfer. A lot of the students that apply to transfer, they're only applying to transfer because they realize that they could graduate earlier at a, at a different college. And so 
Um, that's why the ranking it is really important because if you you see you you know you could possibly graduate in a much earlier time if that's something that you're looking at. And so they'll have you wait an entire year, and then after that, that's when you get to apply. But remember, think of it as a community. You're already within your community. You're taking all the classes with people that you know already. Um, for a lot of people, they end up not transferring and they don't end up not applying to transfer because they've already made all their friends at that college. And two more questions. Um, if a student is taking courses through dual enrollment at a local community college while in high school, would it be in their favor to do so um, just because it impacts the amount of GEs they will take later? Yeah, great question. Um, so yeah, students can, you know, you have the opportunity to dual enroll. Um, you, if you are able and you have the resources to take community college courses to get them exempt, I always recommend to check assist and you can always check with your community college counselor. Assist is a great way to see if that's transferable. Um, not all classes at a community college are transferred or considered UC transferable. So as long as your student is taking courses um, that are UC transferable, they'll be able to receive credit. And, you know, you can also include that on your application in terms of the college coursework. You can include that you've been, that your student's been taking, or your student will be saying that they've been taking those classes. Is there a healthcare option as a major and which college is that in? Is there a healthcare major? We have over 140 majors, minors, and areas of concentration. We have a list on our website. Um, we do have public health, which is a good one. Um, if you're interested in, in becoming a health major, that's, uh, and then we do have specializations for that public health, I believe so. So I would say check our website and look at the 140. It's a lot, they go, there's a lot of information, um, but there's no specific college for that specific major. So remember the college system is just your neighborhoods. It's each, it's almost like eight Disneylands. Think of them as different worlds and that they do not align. For those that are, that know about Harry Potter or are huge Harry Potter fans, think of them just like the schools um, where, you know, you're all eating together, but you all have their different schools. So that's something to take in mind. Okay. And then um, are you taking classes with this, with similar people within your college that you talked about community and so just... Yeah, so the GEs, for the most part, you'll be taking, obviously, you're not going to be taking them with all a thousand students within your college, but you'll be taking with people, the general education with people in your college. So um, the writing sequences for some of the, those courses are just for people in that college. So yes, there are going to be some classes where you'll be taking them with the same people. I think I started noticing that some of the classes that I was taking for my GEs in my college, um, I noticed people from those, from those classes in my political science courses and in other courses that I entered. So you'll start seeing similar people, but um, that doesn't mean that you can't make more friends out of the colleges because you do, you will be taking other courses. It's not just going to be like a high school class where you're just taking classes with that specific group. Okay, thank you so much, Nayeli. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to meet with us this evening. Thank you all for attending this session. Just a reminder, these sessions will be available. Um, the recordings will be available shortly after the event. Have a great evening, everyone.